Hello everyone, it's Reverend Demand again. Hope you're all still well and doing okay at home. I thought I'd send you another little mini assembly to keep us connected together, whether we are on the island or indeed around the world. A virus and a lockdown is not going to separate us. We are all still joined together through our lives and the memories we have shared. And most importantly, what we will share together when we get back to normal. Now, if Reverend Steve or I were with you in school this week, we'd have been talking about Easter. And the build up to that special festival starts this weekend for Christians when we celebrate Palm Sunday, remembering the time when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. There was a great procession and crowds welcomed him by putting their coats or palm leaves on the floor to give him a path to walk up, a bit like a red carpet that celebrities walk up nowadays. I love a good procession, don't you? I know lots of you were in Cow's Carnival Parade or in the May Queen celebrations, and so many of you have already been in a procession yourself. But there are lots of different types of procession. With the help of Jay Pickup again, we're going to go through some. There's the royal procession, where we see kings and queens and other royals in important carriages or on horseback or marching and the crowds cheering and waving their hands or flags. Or it could be just a simple class procession into a hall for an assembly. Yeah not as exciting as the other ones and there's not normally much flag waving in those processions are there or well, there's a special sporting processions there's the one at the beginning of the olympics where all the different nations athletes come into the stadium and the crowds wave flags and cheer them on or the processions that sports teams make after winning a trophy manchester city did one last year when they won the premiership Here's one for this year. <laughs> Jacob's example is especially for all those Liverpool fans out there like him who are desperately sad they may not see that actual happening this year, despite their team being so many points ahead. The sessions are normally happy occasions. And the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem was certainly a joyous and exciting one. People had heard about Jesus and all the great things he had done and they wanted to go and see him. I definitely would have wanted to go. This man who performed miracles like feeding the 5,000 with a few loaves and fishes, making a blind man see, I would like to know what he looked like, wouldn't you? People were saying that he was the Messiah, the one who was going to save them from the cruel Romans who was ruling their country and set them all free. He was the great soldier king that they'd been waiting for for years. And now here he was. And so they wanted to give him a proper welcome. And as they didn't have a red carpet, they used their coats and palm leaves. The only problem was that he didn't come as they expected him to. They thought he was a great soldier king and so would enter on a fine white horse. But instead, Jesus came on a gentle donkey. It wasn't that he couldn't find a horse. Jesus rode a donkey to show the people that he was not a king of battle, but a compassionate king, bringing peace and love. The great thing is, is that Jesus continues to bring peace and love to all of us today. And I think we all need a bit of comfort and peace at this moment. Peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, and maybe even the odd peace, occasional peace in our homes. So let's end with a prayer. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who all those years ago came on a donkey bringing peace and love to the people of Jerusalem and still brings peace and love to us today. We think about our families and our friends and all those we care about, even though we can't go and visit them at this moment. We pray that they too are filled with peace and love during this difficult and strange time. 
Amen. See you all next week. Take care and bye-bye for now.